1960 began an optimistic but extreme decade. The year saw Cold War tensions between the United States, Russia, and Cuba begin to loom. But life for most Americans was generally good. One dollar went a long way. You could buy two gallons of milk, four gallons of gas, or a six-pack of your favorite beer, all for under one buck. On January 2nd, Senator John F. Kennedy from Massachusetts announced his candidacy for president. Throughout the campaign, Cold War tensions with Russia and Cuba would be a major concern for the young Catholic candidate. The NFL announced on January 28th the new franchises from Dallas and Minnesota. The Dallas Cowboys played their first game in 1960 from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The Minnesota Vikings would later debut during the 1961 season. On February 1st in Greensboro, North Carolina, four black college students began a sit-in at a segregated Woolworths lunch counter. Although they are refused service, they are allowed to stay seated at the counter. The event triggers many similar nonviolent protests throughout the South, and six months later, the original four protesters are served lunch at that very same counter. On February 16th, the USS Triton, a nuclear-powered submarine, set off on an around-the-world underwater voyage. The submarine completed the first completely submerged circumnavigation of Earth in 60 days and 21 hours. Bill Keen's Family Circus cartoon strip debuted on February 19th. The cartoon was originally called The Family Circle with a round single panel. Later, the cartoon would be changed to The Family Circus after objections from the magazine Family Circle. The cartoon has been in continuous publication ever since. The very first Playboy Club opened in Chicago on February 29th. Each club featured a living room, a playmate bar, a dining room, and a club room. Members and their guests were served food and drinks by Playboy bunnies, some of whom were featured in Playboy magazine. On March 2nd, comedian and producer Lucille Ball filed for divorce from her husband Desi Arnaz after 19 years of marriage. The breakup of the couple was one of the highest profile divorces in American history at that time. Motown Records was incorporated on April 14th. The company was started by Barry Gordy Jr. The name was a combination of motor and town and was a nod to the city of Detroit. The soulful pop sounds of Motown brought us the likes of Smokey Robinson, The Temptations, Diana Ross and the Supremes, The Jackson Five, Stevie Wonder, and Marvin Gaye. On June 16th, Psycho, a psychological horror film directed by Alfred Hitchcock, opened in New York City. The film starred Janet Leigh and Anthony Perkins, and it became an absolute phenomenon when it was later widely released in September. The deep psychological impact on audiences caused many of them to feel forever uneasy about taking a shower. On June 23rd, the first contraceptive pill also known as birth control, was made available for purchase in the United States. The first brand of birth control was called Innovid, and it provided almost 100% of birth control effectiveness when taken as directed. July 11th was the day that To Kill a Mockingbird, written by Harper Lee, was first published by J.B. Lippincott & Company. This was Lee's first novel, 
and it would tell the story of a small Alabama town seen through the eyes of a young girl depicting life during the Jim Crow era. The book would become a staple in high school classrooms and is regarded as one of the most beloved books in American literature. On August 6th, Chubby Checker started a worldwide dance craze when he appeared on American Bandstand where he performed The Twist. The 18-year-old singer shot to the top of the charts with his version of the 1958 Hank Ballard song. On September 30th, Howdy Doody aired its last show after 2,343 episodes. The popular kids show ended with the usually silent Clarabelle the Clown finally whispering the words, Goodbye, kids. The Andy Griffith Show premiered on CBS on October 3rd. The show introduced the world to a small town called Mayberry and an eccentric cast of memorable characters. The Andy Griffith Show would go on to run for eight seasons and would end as the number one show on television. On November 8th, John F. Kennedy was elected President of the United States defeating Republican candidate Richard Nixon. JFK was the first Roman Catholic president elected and was the first candidate to effectively use television to campaign. On December 2nd, President Dwight D. Eisenhower authorized the use of $1 million for the relief and resettlement of Cuban refugees. They were arriving in Florida at the rate of 1,000 per week fleeing the oppressive communist regime. Wrapping up the year on December 11th, MGM's The Wizard of Oz was aired on CBS, a year after it was previously telecast. This began the tradition of annually airing the film, and it became a much-anticipated family event. The Wizard of Oz had been a modest financial success when it first premiered in 1939, but became a cherished and even more popular film once it began to air each year.